We would love to tell you that, but unfortunately we can't reveal the date just yet. So it will be after Battlefield 3, surprise. So, so that's gonna. I, I would assume this is gonna follow closely on the heels of, of Battlefield 3, or at least a, at least a little bit of time. So, is there, as far as the community goes, obviously the long-term benefits and and basically making sure that the support and everything is there for that game. Is there you seeing that the dedication of the guys gonna know that when that game comes out, that the, the team's gonna be behind it. They're not gonna be. I mean, you're not gonna get that whole. We're moving on to something else. You're gonna really get that dedication. I'm going to give you a big behind the scenes look right here. So we have a dedicated team that works on the Battlefield 3 uh, PDLC plan, like post-launch content and all that stuff. And uh, we call them the live operations, the DICE Live team. And so not really something we use too much outside of the channels, but for like the hardcore community guys, those are our, our guys that are built and designed. Like they're already working on content now. They're working on that back to our content now. There's a separate Battlefield 3 team working on the main game. So. The reason that it's tough to do a lot of times is you, ha you have this huge, massive team and you roll them right over. Obviously, we can't just turn the content on and ship it right out. There's a, a lot of processes to go through, which you don't really understand until you work in games, I promise you. I had no idea. It's like eight weeks to go through certifications and approvals and things like that. Basically, the point is we are starting ahead of time, so we're already working through a lot of this stuff to make sure that the content comes at good times, so we'll want to have stuff where people, you know, as you're going along, you're going to be ranking up and doing well and enjoying that persistence and then giving you a new venue and, like I said, a new theme really to enjoy it with, right? Think of that Battlefield Vietnam or Bad Coming 2 Vietnam expansion pack and having those for a bunch of separate ones. So we're excited to deliver that kind of content quality. That's that's exactly what I think a lot of the, a lot of the people really want to know is that yeah. the support is there. So go ahead. Uh, we, we saw in the uh, Fault Line videos, we saw you drag a player yeah. from danger. I guess one of the other questions we're getting here is, are you going to be able to drag players in multiplayer? Um, we haven't actually revealed any feature like that yet, but uh, for those people that are here and have played the multiplayer here at E3, showing for the first time, um, the way that you now revive or defib your guys and some of the other like physical elements of being able to like grab your guys, uh, those are really cool and immersive elements. So not confirming that for multiplayer just yet. So, um, but they are obviously in single player, and it's part of those kind of intense moments of like build up, right? And it's connecting you to like your comrades in the world around you. In that situation that you know he's referring to in the Fault Line series, it's very like emotional, like stressful moment, right? Your buddy's just been hit, trying to get him out of the path, and then like this massive firefighter erupts. Clearly, like not planned. So, absolutely. And, and coming from the real military, believe me, you're not doing triage in the, in the open during a live fire session. You're going to engage, then treat somebody. So if you can drag them out, that's awesome. Uh, one of the other things that we're starting to get is, uh, can we can we get that question again? Oh, can we switch fire modes in multiplayer? So can we go from uh, we got got semi-auto? I know in the in the real military, I save semi and auto, but uh, or burst actually. But the can you switch modes during multiplayer? I was just giving a demonstration to someone showing how you can switch fire modes in there. I was using uh, I believe the M16, the default weapon for our soul guys and just using like the standard fully automatic and showing them like what spray and pray look like because they weren't really getting the hang of it and then I switched and started doing single shot mode and one of the things that I really like about it, I do it just because I like it, is I like the sound. I love the, the, the echo that you almost get from it, the like single shot, the staccato pops as they, they light off the round. So yes, you can switch uh, firing modes and actually on that we have um, for our vehicle a little bit of customization there as well. Will there be? Uh, will your health regenerate, or as you as you get hit, is that going to go away until you can get actually get a medic going? Um, so I mean, are you going to have over time, or somebody's going to be out there? Are they going to regenerate, or are you going to make it more true to life where they, hey, if you're out there, you're going to have to find a medic to get repaired? Yeah, we have one of the things that Battlefield's always been about for us is fun. That's like the main thing. We want to make it fun. We do a lot of things to make it authentic and realistic, like for our physics, right? We have bullet drop, so if you're sniping, you got to account for long distance range and stuff like that. Um, we do have regenerative health of some degree in there. Obviously, if you're if you're in action though, it's um, passive regeneration. So you have to be out of an action zone. Like if you're being shot at the whole time, your health is not going to regenerate. It's actually one of the cool elements in the game. We have a suppression element that's in multiplayer. So if you are one of the support guys, you can get suppression points for laying down fire, either watching your team move up or knocking back an enemy, which will distort them. Oh, so you're going to have a visual distortion for the so if somebody's being suppressed. Then you're going to have you're basically you'll take away a little of the visual effect to, to kind of simulate that that you know volume of fire. Yeah, we actually have a, quite a few visual effects in multiplayer that are really unique, and this is more of the authentic and kind of true to life. 
Um, with our rendering engine, we're able to do really cool stuff with the lighting, and you have flashlights on a lot of your weapons. And so if you're in a tight space, you turn on your flashlight and turn a corner, as the receiving player, it's going to be very hard to see. It's going to almost blind you. Obviously, you kind of know where the light's coming from, so a lot of people's blind fire. Um, but it's almost a tactic, like if you turn a corner with a shotgun or something, say, turn on your light, boom, bam, 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 light a few rounds, like it's stunned. You know, and it has benefits on both ways. You can either blind players, but also if you're running horizontally or perpendicular to me, you're just a duck. Um, so we have that. We have suppression, so like grenades and stuff that go off. You know, you become distorted. So it's like being on the immersive battlefield out there in a lot of different ways. So one of the other things in Battlefield 2, actually going back, I believe, all the way to 1942, you get in the water, you're floating on top, doing a dog paddle thing. Uh, one of the questions we're getting is, can you swim underwater in Battlefield 3? I do not believe so. Don't hold me to it, but I don't believe we're going to be swimming underwater. We like to stay, keep, keep the battle above. <laughs> so, all right, guys, we're back to the dog paddle. So, <laughs> <laughs> But the water looks great. Cool. Uh, so squads. How many people in the squads? I know we were basing on four in uh, Bad Company. What do we got for uh, Battlefield 3? Yep, same thing. You'll be working in the squad of four. Uh, one of the cool things we've added in there is that on the multiplayer, especially for your enemies, you can see kind of who the squad leader is. And usually that means that's kind of like the alpha dog. You cut the head off, right? Sometimes the tail falls apart. Um, so you'll, you'll see a denoted icon in multiplayer if you either spot someone or shoot at them and hit them. You'll see the icon pop up denoting like, oh, this guy's the leader of, of that enemy squad. Um, so you have squads of four, being able to squat, uh, spawn on your players. And of course, the main reason we have squads is the squad bonuses. So, you know, engineer can repair the vehicles, assault guy can uh, drop medikits to bring people back to life, support obviously dishing out lots of firepower and ammo for your teammates, and recon doing a lot of intel work for the rest of the team. So with squad base play, especially with four, squads are going to have to work together, and that's how it is. I mean, everything stacks up in the real military, so, and I assume that's, that there's been that discussion in Battlefield 3, or, or, or Battlefield Bad Company 3, you end up having where you have four and four, but they don't really get a chance to talk to each other. Are, are there going to be something more in Battlefield 3 to kind of let squads talk to each other, not without, without actually going? Um, I don't know about squad to squad versus the whole team inside of it. We are part of the what we mentioned earlier on the battle log elements. Is there's going to be a lot of VoIP stuff that you can talk to other players on there. We want to make it easier to communicate with your team, both your whole team and then your squad. You know, whatever way you like to discern those players. Uh, but working together is always important, and obviously working in groups of squads can be much more effective. Obviously, than working in one squad. So uh, we are, that is something we're we're very much working towards. Uh, on Battle Log, we'll be able to enable such VoIP elements for all the PC stuff and TBD on console. So uh, all our snipers are now talking, and they said uh, they, they want to be able to uh, they they, they want to be able to snipe those pilots out of a vehicle. Oh, so nice. snipe snipe them out of the choppers, I guess, out of the uh, drivers. Are we going to be able to? Uh, well, you know, it's going to be kind of hard when they're in a tank that's fully armored. But yes, um, just like in Bad Company 2, actually, if you are open and susceptible and you got a great aim, more power to you. If you can shoot me out of a chopper, good luck. But it's probably going to be 100 to 1. I'm going to rain those hellfires down. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. We got to let you go. Get back to the get right. back to the good stuff. So appreciate it. Thanks, Alan. Let's get you back in here. Right. We'll get you back downstairs. All right. So. I guess they want you to go that way. They don't want you in front of the uh, the battlefield tree. <laughs> you, 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 you hey, big we boy. had a great time here. Uh, I was downstairs in a multiplayer pit. They are going, they are going nuts downstairs. I got a little uh, time with a bunch of fans. There's some really excited people out there on that line. And unfortunately, that line goes all the way around the booth. And a lot of people aren't getting in today, but oh, I guarantee you, cutting? they will be here tomorrow. I haven't got my dog tag. <laughs> Oh, I'm I gotta cutting. get a dog tag. I'm I gotta cutting. get some play time. So uh, met a lot of great people from all over the world. Met some guys from Australia uh, downstairs. Uh, had a first sergeant and a company commander from uh, the local re recruiting company come in. Uh, Captain Hernandez and uh, first sergeant Manley from the local recruiting uh, Go Army. Got to do that. Uh, met, met some prior service members. There's a young man from the 89th MP Company and Iraq War vet. Met him downstairs. Uh, he had some he had some poignant comments to play. Uh, he's pumped to play these games. So. Uh, it's been a great day here. Uh, you guys have been following us on Twitter. You've been following us on Facebook. We've got what? we got Twitter, twitter.com slash battlefield. We've got uh, battlefield.com, of course. We have uh, facebook.com slash battlefield. And, uh, of course, you're watching us on Ustream. But, hey, 
still take all your comments. Keep it up. We're from Off-Duty Gamers, of course, so we represent the military. Keep it up. I've heard nothing but great things from the, from the gang of DICE. These guys are working for you. They are working to make sure that they actually are making sure all the details are right, and they have have said that the, the analysis and the breakdowns are their team, and we're making sure that they respect the military, and that when a military game you know, has that feel like this one does in the details, we really want to make sure that they're being true to you guys because you guys are out there doing the tough work. So hey, make sure you guys uh, stay tuned to the Battlefield blog for more details. All right, hey. guys. We're out of here. Airborne, all the way. Ugh.